another branch of ragtime which we call novelty ragtime. George Cobb wrote a very famous tune in straight ragtime called the Russian Rag, and then when novelty rag became popular, he rewrote it for the new Russian Rag. Probably the most famous novelty ragtime tune of all is Zez Confrey's Kitten on the Keys. It's a wonderful piano piece. It's tough to play, and believe me, advanced intermediates. <laughs> I wrote, a, I wrote a, 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 a novelty rag one time for Tony Caramia, so I called it Too Many Beans. And, it, and I, I, I did record it, and, but I, it's gone from my fingers now. It's just really tough. And I, I, I gained a, a complete comp appreciation of how tough some of these things were, because I was trying to copy some of, some of the riffs that they would use in novelty ragtime and invent some of my own in the process. <clears throat> novelty ragtime still gets played every, every now and again, um, but more, you're more likely to hear stride and classic ragtime. Among the great classic ragtime writers is Joseph Lamb. And since you guys are here, I can't not play this tune. <laughs> uh, one of my favorite, in fact, this used to be a festival favorite. And I recall vividly when John Arpin, who was our friend from Toronto, uh, who died a number of years ago, about 10 years ago now. <clears throat> yeah, it's that long, yeah. Yeah. At any rate, he used to play this and, and bring down the house with it. It was. This is a, a tune that wasn't popular during Joe's lifetime either. It it caught on thanks to ragtime festivals. Right. Yeah, and uh, it's called Bohemia.
among the hot topics amongst ragtimers is the issue of tempo. And as a classically trained musician, I really have to wonder why this is the case. I don't find it that mystifying, and I wind up having a lot of disagreements with some of my comrades uh, about you know, how fast or slow a piece of music should go. Um, we have certain examples on recording that we can follow if we choose to do so. Uh, most of those take the tempo at what would, we would call a slow march tempo. And for those of you that know what a metronome is, that would be a quarter note equals somewhere around 85 to 100. Uh, a slow march, a full march tempo is about 120. Like, okay? And maple leaf rag, if you play it that fast, is scary. Minute rag. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it doesn't go that fast. In fact, probably Scott Joplin or maybe his publisher John Stark heard people playing it at that tempo because they marked it tempo di marzia. And after that, they said, and you can see this in all the scores that they published note, do not play this piece fast. It is never right to play ragtime fast. It's not really true. <laughs> uh, in fact, a lot of people back in those days played ragtime as fast as they could. Uh, Joplin had a certain sensibility where he felt, I'm sure, uh, and I'm putting words into his, or thoughts into his head, words into his mouth. Um, there's more going on in this music than meets the eye, and if you play it too fast, then you're not going to hear it. And that is a perfectly legitimate point. For instance, a, a, a composition like... The Non Pare, for instance, is a lovely rag of his. And if you play it fast, you lose it. Joplin is right about his own rags. But I don't think we can take that and apply it across the board. Otherwise, they wouldn't have had ragtime cutting contests where the various performers would show off their wares, and very often it meant playing lots of tricky passage work at top speed. Fun to listen to. So what it comes down to is this. It depends on the style, first of all. 
If it's Scott Joplin, who's a very intricate composer uh, with lots of musical ideas uh, woven next to each other, that kind of the texture of that fabric, you won't hear that if you play it too fast. On the other hand, if you're something like a Tin Pan Alley ragtime writer, uh, which most of the time they'd write simple stuff, they'd elaborate it with simple but flashy riffs and play it really extremely fast. It also depends on whether or not you're going to sit and listen to it or you're going to dance to it. What did they dance with this stuff? They danced what was called the ragtime two-step. And later on, when ragtime started to speed up, they turned it into the, the one-step, which is essentially like walking around the room. <laughs> you and your partner are going like this. And it's really, it's a very easy dance to do, uh, as you can imagine. The, the two-step has a little kick in it, too, and was really the predecessor of the foxtrot. 